Hello from Digicool Things. Today I received this parcel. I've been waiting for a little while for this to arrive, um, so I'm quite excited. Let me show you. On the customs docket it says preheating station value $20 US. It was actually $35 US I think um, from AliExpress, but I'll put a link down below. The reason I got this is because I've been looking to buy a solder reflower hot plate. I know a lot of people use uh, ovens for doing reflow, but I like the idea of a hot plate because it's smaller than an oven. You can access the board while it's being reflowed if you need to adjust any component positions. You can see what's happening, which is great. And you can also use it if you want to remove selected components from a um, surface mount board because everything's accessible anyway let's open her up and have a look and my blunt knife Put a new blade in it one day. Okay, let's get this puppy out. There's a manual. It's interesting. None of those look like what I bought. And let's dump it upside down. There's the bottom, got a good uh, power cord, hasn't got the insulation sleeves on there so I don't know whether it's legal in this country but anyway. Polystyrene and here we go. So as you can see it's a, I guess that's pronounced UE, UE, 946-1010. Now the 1010 uh, indicates that this is a hundred millimeters square. They also have a 1515 which is 150 mil by 150 mil and also a 2020 model um, which is 200 mil square. So if you need a bigger surface for doing more boards then uh, they're available for a little bit more money. Now um, my thinking was because this has a temperature range up into the hundreds of degrees um, it should be sufficient for not only preheating um, your solder reflow but also actually doing the reflow so I was thinking what I'd do is um, set it to 150 degrees Celsius for um, doing a soak and then after a couple of minutes just manually pump it up to the reflow temperature when I first looked at this I thought hmm I wonder if I could use one of these and mix it with Unexpected Maker's Reflow Oven Controller because obviously this has got a thermal couple it's probably got a solid state relay in there to switch the elements and a microcontroller so you sort of think well maybe you could just replace that and turn it into an automated reflow station but I assumed that it probably hasn't got a fan which means the cooldown rate may be, may be too slow so worst case I'll just be able to put the board on uh, let the components reflow and then just take it off um, take the board off the hot plate right you can also see one of the attractions I had for this is how small it is I don't have a lot of space in my workshop um, and yeah, I haven't really got place to put a big oven. So something like this, which is compact and can be put away when you're not using it, is um, is ideal. Right, as I do with anything I get from China that's mains powered, the first thing I would do is actually pull it apart so I can have a look inside, um, mainly to make sure uh, the earth connection is is done properly and the case is all properly earthed and safe um, and that the mains wiring again also looks safe so let's do that 
Alright, looks like we just need to take the feet off. Let me go get a screwdriver. Radio. One. Two. Three. Yeah, you can see that uh, this manual seems to be for another type of re um, preheater station because the pictures obviously bear no resemblance to the station I've bought. Oh, some English instruction manual. Uh, let's see. Back half is English, first half is whatever dialect evasion that is. <laughs> okay, let's take the base off. And here we have the inside. If I can zoom in a little bit for you. So there's a nice big solid state relay in there. Um, see the mains wiring all looks reasonably nice. And there's the controller in there. I'll have to have a look and see uh, see what chip that is. And it looks like um, power going in, there's going to be a thermal couple connected and it looks like there's multiple element wires going through there um, you can see the wires go through yeah there's it's thermocouple and a couple of element wires on that side and this side looks like it's got uh, couple of perhaps elements and maybe maybe there's three elements covering that surface not sure anyway the main thing I wanted to check out was just to see uh, the mains wiring um, let's see so okay I can see the earth is actually soldered to a spade lug um, you may not be able to see it down in the bottom there on the camera soldered to a spade lug and it's bolted to the metal case. I'll check it with a meter, but it looks good. Um, there's an 8-pin surface mount ID IC. Another IC. I'll need to get in and see if I can have a look at what their markings are, but anyway. I think I'm just going to put the lid back on and uh, fire it up. Can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just putting in the other foot. Okay. Alright, let me just zoom back out. Yeah, let me check the case this earth. Yep, that's good. Top surface is earthed. Yep, I'm happy. Just check there's no shorts. Yep, we're good. Okay. the power in and fire up and see what happens. Eleven degrees. That's probably about right. It's winter here. Okay. It's the temperature climbing up. Um, if I press set 
So I can set it to hundred degrees. I have to press that again. Maybe. Right now it's climbing. Yep, I can feel that getting warm. Yeah, the rate of temperature increase is not uh, particularly fast. Yeah, for reflow I'd put a board on top, set it to perhaps 150 degrees for the soak. Let it climb to that value, maybe leave it for a minute or two at the soak temperature and then wind it up to perhaps 190 degrees for my standard lead based solder paste. Right, well what I should do is get myself a circuit board with some solder paste and a couple of components to give this thing a whirl. Right, I've happily got this set up now so that I can uh, record how this goes. I've got an iPhone pointing at the display so I can video the temperature. I've got another camera pointing at the top of the um, preheater so I can zoom in on the components being soldered uh, and then I've got my main camera overhead let's see what happens okay I've put some paste on three of the pads here I'm just going to put um, a few cheap resistors this is just a test so I'm not going to bother with which way around I've got my resistors even though I always try and make them the same way around Okay, let's put that on the heating plate, get it centred on the camera I've got zoomed in. Right, I'll start my video, and start this video, and it's supply power. Okay, I assume it's starting at 20 degrees. Uh, Set that now to 150 degrees. Okay. I'm guessing that red light, red decimal point is indicating that the elements are now on. Right, it's finally reached 150 degrees. Okay, and we can see the solder's starting to now reflow. seem to have centered quite nicely Alright, let's take it off. And switch her off. Okay, 
Okay, I think I'll call that experiment a success. Although manually controlled and not following an exact reflow profile, it's certainly a more consistent application of temperature than just using a hot air gun. There would also be a benefit in using it purely as a preheater for the initial soak at 150 degrees and then completing the actual reflow with your heat gun. I haven't tried this yet, but with the PCB already at 150 degrees, the hot air gun would be pretty quick and more consistent than without the preheater soak. So there you have it, a relatively cheap, compact and quite flexible PCB reflow and also SMD component removal or repair solution. That's it. Thanks for watching.